In this video essay, I look at the relationship between voters' turnout and the state of democracy in a range of countries. Is a higher voter turnout necessarily a sign of flourishing democracy? Or perhaps it is a sign of crisis? Now, when you try to measure democracy, you immediately run into a concept problem and a knowledge problem. The concept problem is that people don't agree on what democracy is. Democracy is often described as a system of governance by the people, especially rule of the majority. A democratic government is one in which the supreme power is vested in the people and exercised by them directly or indirectly. Such a system usually involves freely held elections. And it is this aspect of democracy, namely elections and voters turnout in particular that is the focus of this video essay make your voice heard scholars and politicians agree that robust voter turnout is fundamental to a healthy democracy based on this view established democracies tend to have higher voter turnouts than other countries world leaders and politicians are particularly concerned with the levels of voters' turnout in their countries, where elections are held. This is true from countries like the Islamic Republic of Iran. The Supreme Leader led his fellow citizens in casting ballots Friday. Ayatollah Ali Khamenei urged them to vote in large numbers to pick members of the 290-seat parliament. State television showed him marking his paper, then dropping it into a sealed box. It is always a sign of a truth inside the country, and it always carries a message for our friends and our enemies. Same concern exists in the United States of America. Listen to what President Obama had to say about voting as a civil duty. The most important office in a democracy, the office of citizens. That's what I saw right there. Exercising my friendship. I spoke to the president and I asked him about the importance of getting out the vote. We can't afford to be sitting at home uh, thinking that the midterms don't matter. And the truth is, is that in most of these states, in most of these congressional districts, if we have high turnout, we win. And when we have low turnout, we lose. It's as simple as that. So what I need everybody to do is just go out there and vote. The United States has the second lowest voter turnout rate among the world's developed nations. In fact, only 57% of American citizens voted in the 2008 presidential election and a mere 38% of Americans made it to the polls in the 2010 national elections. Lower voter turnout seemed to be an issue in the United Kingdom as well. Election after election, the level of voter turnout has dropped. So what does such low voter turnout in supposedly advanced democracies tell us why do people in the United States and United Kingdom do not go to the polling stations to cast their vote some have argued that higher voters turnout is not necessarily a sign of flourishing democracy they have argued that it could actually be a sign of a totalitarian regime where people have no choice or voting registers are not accurate and falsified all candidates were reported to have received 100% support. Yet others have argued that a high voters turnout can be considered a sign of crisis. Voters turnout have been high in Iran ever since the Islamic Revolution of 1979. The first national referendum was held in 1979 and saw a staggering 97% participation by all eligible voters. The question was Islamic Republic, yes or no? And people voted yes. Similarly, in the 2009 presidential elections in Iran, more than 75% of all eligible voters cast their vote. However, some argued that people had the choice between the best of the bad bunch and not a real choice.
منو چند بار با خانمم گرفتن شما چه نسبتی دارید؟ The Scottish referendum may be another case which showcases how a real sense of urgency and crisis may lead to higher voters turnout. The Scottish people participated in the referendum in very high numbers, perhaps because they feared the outcome of the referendum might directly have an impact on their lives. For better, or worse. But we cannot still conclude that a higher water turnout is necessarily a sign of crisis. Countries like Tunisia, Egypt or Libya that emerged from revolutions and were really facing a sense of urgency and crisis did not manage to achieve high voters turnout. Voters turnout in Egypt after, two to, after the 2012 revolution was only 49%. Lower voter turnout was a particular sign of the 2014 presidential elections in Egypt. Most polling stations were almost empty. The reason for the weak participation is the lack of strong political parties to push their members to take part in these elections. Turnout in Libya's parliamentary elections is reported to have been low on Wednesday. Interim Prime Minister Abdullah Altini made sure to vote, but it appears that less than half of the 1.5 million Libyans registered cast their ballots. Crisis and turmoil do not always lead to higher voter turnout. It seems like people need to have a real choice in order to come out and cast their ballot on the election day. This conclusion is true whether we're talking about Libya, Egypt, Iran, or Scotland. In recent times, the Scottish independence referendum uh, was the greatest example of the franchise that we've had. 85% uh, uh, turned out for the referendum. But is that because there was a choice? There was actually an important choice, whereas in the general election in this country, there, there isn't much of a choice when it comes to yeah. policy. It should also be mentioned that high voters turnout is not necessarily absent in Western democracies. Denmark, for example, has seen very high, above 80% voters turnout throughout its election history. The same is true about the country like Finland and other Scandinavian countries where voting is not even compulsory like it is in Australia, for example. Scholars agree that having a real choice is one of the most significant factors leading to high voters' turnout. Voters respond when they have choices between candidates. The bigger the difference in the candidates' policy positions, what they offer voters, the more likely they are to vote because it makes a difference. And so why, if candidates are similar, why should you spend your time and effort and energy showing up at the polls on election day? It's not uh, that I'm not voting out of apathy. I'm not voting out of absolute indifference and weariness and exhaustion from the lies, treachery, deceit of the political class that has been going on for generations now and which has now reached fever pitch where we have a disenfranchised, disillusioned, despondent underclass that are not being represented by that political system. So voting for it is tacit complicity with that system and that's not something I'm offering up. I conclude this video essay by going back to the questions that I raised at the beginning. What is the relationship between the state of democracy in a given country and the level of voters turnout in that country? Do higher voter turnout necessarily suggest a more flourishing state of democracy? Not necessarily. However, higher voter turnout might coincide with important decisions. This often happens in major referendums. From another perspective, major referendums like the one in Scotland or the one in Iran in 1979 suggest that people need to have a real choice between the options in order to participate in large numbers 
Therefore, we can conclude that there is a positive correlation between high water turnout and the presence of real choice. However, this does not mean that that choice is necessarily a perfect choice. But nevertheless, 